Why weren't the last three Star Wars films like that? Hello everyone, my name's Kai Zammett and I'm a director, cinematographer and writer and today, thanks to you guys, we are looking at Star Wars The Old Republic Return. How these videos work is I break it down into two parts. The first part is I watch and react to said medium. The second part of the video is I break it down as a filmmaker. I look at it again, video editing, cinematography. Was it a certain lens style that they used? Overall story perhaps? Whatever it may be, hopefully by the end of today's video, you'd have learned something or seen a glimpse behind the curtain when it comes to storytelling and filmmaking. But first, a quick word about this video sponsor, DIY OJ. So DIYOJ.com got in contact and said, Kai, would you like your very own custom jersey for your YouTube channel? And I said, you know what? I've never had anything like this before. I would love one. I was actually in the market anyway, looking for a hockey jersey. So it was perfect timing. So they said, have a look at the website. Tell us exactly what you want. Everything on it is completely customizable. Sometimes you get things and you're a bit concerned, like, oh, is it gonna be any good? But actually, I'm really shocked of how good the quality is. It's all actually stitched into. So this logo is just, it's just fantastic. You can pick any jersey type that you want. You've got different colors, you've got different font types that you can choose, and you've even got custom logos, which I did. What I'll do is I'll leave a link in the description below so you can check out the website yourself and have a look at what they've got. Honestly, it, is, it blew me away how much they've got. Thank you so much to DIYOJ.com for one, sponsoring this video, but mainly for sending me this custom hockey jersey because now I've got this, and it's fantastic, especially at the start of this YouTube journey. I just, yeah, I love it. Thank you so much. Let's get on with it, shall we? Play the tape. Da, da, da. As soon as you hear that music, it, it gets me right here every time without fail. Such a beautiful light motif. Well, in this case, a, a world light, a, a world Kulkan, light motif. Ancient birthplace of the Sith. We believed ruins were all that remained of their evil empire. It's gorgeous looking. I swear, I had no idea what was in those crates. I'm innocent. You were smuggling Sith artifacts, Captain. Fine, keep the artifacts. Just give me back my shit. Great. Look at the design. Nice front. Just inspecting the troops, Corporal. <laughs> I sense a disturbance in the force. Darkness. I love Star Wars, man. It's so good. Where they come? Sith Empire has returned. We must warn the Republic. Our shuttles can't outrun those fighters. <clears throat> well, guess who's got the fastest ship in the sector? Is he like a, a um, is it a Han Solo? Is it? Got his name then for a second. Look out! Yes, mate. This to me is what I loved about Episode One, and well, I did like Episode Two. Oh, these are cool, these slow motion bits. Wicked. My shit. <laughs> Where's she <laughs> She's not pretty, but she's tough. That? Please be this is our fight. A, a Sith. Yes. Tell the music. Whoa. T7, Love Star Wars, man. Oh shit! Why weren't the last three Star Wars films like that? Come on! 
Go, Satil. You must walk a different path. Oh no, he's gonna sacrifice himself, is he? Master! I love it. Over the top. Drama. Yo, he's badass. This is reminding me why I used to like Star Wars. Oh! I was not expecting that. Yo, this guy is b So who's the Master Sith? Right, okay. How oh, she felt that. It's not a Star Wars film without that close shave of the ships. They've escaped, Master. You failed. No, Malgus. This is only the beginning. Yes. After a thousand years, Korriban is ours again. Welcome home. He just, he just cut down his own master. Of course he did. That was that was brilliant. That reminded me why I used to love. Well, I still love Star Wars, but why I used to watch Star Wars. Every time when I was a kid growing up watching it, I got that excitement, especially with Episode One and all the Jedi battles. That reminded me of how good Star Wars could have been or can be still. Um, with all the obviously the later ones kind of tarnished that a bit. But yeah, that that was uh, that was. Amazing. So immediately starting off, it hits you with that score. The score you know, the score you love. And what that is, that's a light motif, or in this case, it's actually a world light motif. It's a short reoccurring musical phrase or piece, and it's associated with characters, places, or themes even. I can guarantee you, you'd have heard some of these. I can go slow ahead. Come on down and chump some of this shit. Dark arts teacher. I am here because Dumbledore asked me. End of story. Goodbye. The end. Any questions? Same thing when the Jedi Sith Lords arrived. The score hit, the light motif, I knew immediately who was on that ship and what's about to happen. Please be this is our fight. A, a Sith. Yes. Tell the music. Nine times out of ten Star Wars films or Star Wars content will have an established shot in space. And this is fantastic for cold callers, people that are new to the franchise. They immediately know from the first shot that this world is centered or the story is centered around space and the characters that live well, in space. This is where Star Wars love to give us the narrative exposition and tell us the information about the story. In this case, 
It's the Sith homeworld and it's Korriban. What I love about Star Wars is the way they make their worlds, the universe feel big, you know, the expanse. They love to show big vistas, the depth of the shot. You know, there's so much going on in this world. They make it feel really lived in. You're like, whoa, what's that ship over there? What, what's that alien? Your, your eyes are all over the place because it, they just it's a fantastic way to make the world feel lived in. And I absolutely love that about Star Wars just that that feeling of it feels very alive and yeah i think it's fantastic the introduction of characters and how they frame them the importance of the characters just by how they're positioned and placed within the composition the, the frame the captain i knew immediately he was going to have a major role within this story or at least going forward and the reason being because he's in the middle of the frame it's all all eyes are on him we also heard him before we saw him and that's a classic sign of a leading character you have seven seconds to leave an impression on someone in real life so in person in marketing and in films and this character immediately within his first seven seconds he was a bit of a badass he was checking out the bird going past wasn't he like nice front just inspecting the troops corporal so <laughs> Straight away, I knew he was the bad boy or a bit of a naughty boy. And yeah, I really like that. Just in case that as a viewer, we didn't get that he's really important to this role. That's why they also gave him that really badass slow motion shot where he's pulling triggers and doing a spin, like a 360 thing, because that's there to tell you, just to remind you, yes, this guy is a badass and just keep an eye on him. As I mentioned earlier, the light motif kicks in or the score kicks in. The bad guys arrive, the ships arrive and all hell breaks loose. What I enjoy about Star Wars and in this film too is the movement. They're continuously pushing you along. You're never in one place for too long. By pushing you along all the time is how they keep the world feeling huge, expansive. But in reality, we only really saw three scenes or three locations. The hallway scene, you've got the battle area, so the docking bay, and then in space, you just feel like you've seen absolutely tons. Because you're being pushed along, you're following that thread all the way through. It's a bit like being a roller coaster car on a roller coaster track. Yes, film and narrative is meant to be like that, but this really does feel like that, and that is the difference. Then that score, that light motif kicks in, here comes the Sith Jedi. I immediately knew it, but just in case you're a cold caller, you've never seen a Star Wars before. They got the Jedi Master to turn around and speak to the other character saying, you go and you leave this to us. This is something only we can deal with. And immediately you know, okay, whoever's on that ship, only these people can deal with. And as I said, they, they kind of cater for if you don't know that. Just to back up that argument, just to tell you, the cold caller at least, that here comes the bad guys, the real tough ones, because the way the ship door opens, the smoke bellows from it. The way they cut through the smoke walking, it's an instant sign of, holy shit, these guys are tough and look how bad ass they look. This is why I say you have to have smoke or fog or, or haze on your sets or in your shots when it comes to powerful characters. It will make you feel that instant bad ass. Oh, look how tough they are. And yeah, it's an amazing effect. Just from a little bit of smoke or, or the smoke bellowing from the ship, you immediately felt it. My favorite thing is at the very end of that shot, after they're walking, they run out of shot. It just emphasizes that they are the aggressor. One thing I've noticed over the years of watching Star Wars and things like that is Star Wars has its own camera movement. An action cam will shake and it's sharp and it's edgy and it's rough. You know, you're like, oh my God, what is going on? But it emphasizes is what is happening in the scene. In this case, it is an action cam, but they smooth off the emotion. And what I really like about this is you're still able to, well, you're able to actually see what is going on. You get, you're able to see this battle, this dance between the Jedi, the way they fight. I absolutely love it. If it's really harsh and edgy, I just don't think it would work as well because with this, I want to see this beautiful motion, these masters fighting. When I'm watching gun shoots and God knows what else, then absolutely the shaky cam is perfect. But this year, Star Wars has got its own camera movement with its action and I and I love it, I, I really do. We get moments in the fight scene for character development, the way the master saves the Padawan, you know, he throws his lightsaber. You've got the evil Sith Lord, the way he strikes the Padawan, the young Padawan with the lightning. But then immediately afterwards, the Jedi Master then blows him away with a false air thing, whatever he does. It's almost like saying, oh, you can do that to her. I can also do it to you. I really like those moments. They really show 
as I said, character development. It gave the fight scene great pacing. Every battle fight scene on screen, it need, it's all about pace. You have to have those slower moments to emphasize the faster moments. And vice versa, you need those fast moments to emphasize the slower moments. Then is the important sacrifice moment where the Grand Master or the, the Jedi says, I'm gonna stay, Padawan, you go. It, yes, the score was there and the words were there, but what emphasized it more and the most was the actual camera movement. What they do is to emphasize a piece of dialogue or an expression on someone, a character's face, the camera will dolly forward. So that means it moves forward very slowly. Go, Satil, you must walk a different path. A simple dolly movement forward will make a moment in time within your film or scenes that 100% more powerful. Just a little simple dolly movement forward. What I really liked is the camera felt very organic, as if an actual operator was filming it. Because the moment they had that dialogue exchange, that Padawan, you go away and I, I will stay, he walked out of shot, but he actually left half his body was out of frame, which is very unusual. A lot of amateurs would be like, oh no, he's got to be in the center. But what makes this a pro is the way that they actively made that decision of he will walk out of frame, cut half of him off, and then the camera will be like, oh, hang on, I need to follow him. I really like that. It just made the camera feel very organic. It made me feel like I was actually watching a film, even though it was a CGI trailer. It was very cleverly done, that was. There was the powerful moment of running and jumping for the ship, and it turned in slow motion. Slow motion is there to emphasize that feeling, that moment in time. This is how you can tell the difference between a rookie and a veteran filmmaker. A rookie will make every shot slow motion on their films, where a veteran will sprinkle them in because they know that slow motion is there to emphasize a moment in time, not every bloody shot. <laughs> I think the fight scene on this, the Jedi battles were done beautifully. It showed loads of wides. And what I like about fight scenes and wides in fight scenes is you can see the movement. These Jedi are dancing. It is a dance the way they fight and it's it's beautiful. And then they leave the close-ups for the impact or the to show the emotion on a character's face. By mixing the wides and the close-ups together, it's a winning combination. Yeah, it's lovely. Wides to see the dance, close-up to feel the emotion of the characters. Yeah, as I said, winning combination. The moment the Master Jedi started throwing items at the Sith Lord or Prentice, whatever he is, I knew immediately he was going to die. But why? Villains, or characters that use weapons, tend to lose their fights. You'll have a hand-to-hand -hand combat and then the villain will pull out a knife or he'll pull out a gun or pull something out, a weapon, and they lose. And in this case, it was a sword fight. And as far as I'm concerned, the Jedi Master started throwing things and then that was like bringing a gun to a sword fight. However, in this case, they used it for character development. He started throwing the items at him and he was cutting them down, smashing them and breaking through. It made him build up his power level. He just looked incredible. I was like, whoa, hang on a minute. He looks really tough. This is almost a different character. For me personally, the way he beat the Jedi Master, I felt it was a bit too quick. The Jedi Master was fighting both of them off and then suddenly the Jedi Sith Lord person gets her, and then the apprentice immediately his level goes from 50 to 100. You guys have to let me know what you think. Did he beat him too quickly? Was it too hot off the hill after beating the Sith Master to then suddenly the Padawan to then go in and strike him down? Because as I said, the Grand Master or the Jedi was beating both of them quite easily, I felt, to then suddenly lose to the apprentice. I don't know. You guys let me know what you think. After the Grand Master was struck down, again, you got that dolly shot, that powerful moment of his Padawan feeling it in the force that he had lost his fight. You don't need dialogue. Sometimes it can just be a certain look or an expression on a character's face. But by having that dolly shot going forward, it just gives you, it just brings your eyes to their eyes and you just feel what they're feeling. It's lovely. I love a dolly shot. A lot of commercials do it now. It's a continuously up in the person's face or grill just to say, oh, look how emotive they are. Like, oh, oh, you get it all the time. But in this case, it was done lovely. Nice and slow, going forward, the music, the score coming in. You, you really felt 
what she felt. Yeah, it was beautiful. To show the heroes barely escaping the fighter scene, they had the classic, the vintage Star Wars shot of the ship going on its side or having to squeeze for a tight gap. By having the ship go for that tight space, that squeeze, it makes you feel, it tells the audience that they barely made it. If it was just in an open space, it just wouldn't have that effect. You need your characters, you need your audience to be like, and that going for a tight space will do that. And lastly, story-wise at the end, the young Padawan cutting down his master, being pushed into the spotlight as the main villain. That immediately told me the type of character that he is. He's not afraid to do anything that he wants to get what he wants. And they're a very dangerous character. I really like those characters. For me personally, I know it's a very stereotypical trope or character trope, but for me, I quite like that. I like my villains to be like, I will go through anyone and anything to get what I want. That are, to me, they're very dangerous characters. It's time for these Padawans to have their moment in the sun. It's their time to shine, to go up in the levels, to become the main heroes. It's classic character writing. Your characters will have to lose something or, or someone or experience something so shocking that it rocks them. What I really like about this story and these Padawans is that they both lost their masters. One cut his down and the other one lost theirs or it was taken away. It's a starting block for your characters to grow, be pushed and well ultimately begin their journey. And there you have it, that was my reaction and thoughts on Star Wars The Old Republic Return. I really hope you enjoyed today's video guys and if you did give it a thumbs up as it really does help out the channel, it really does. But would you like to see some more? Well over there I've got to put another reaction video for you. I'll see you next time, bye bye.